welcome to my weekly market roundup i am sagar nandi i swing trade stocks using q systems and techniques that i develop this is my email id trading profitably at gmail.com my youtube channel trading profitably twitter handle sagar nandi and my traders forum sagarnandi.com I regularly share live market and stock analysis on these forums. These are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer I am not an investment advisor. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. As usual, in today's topics, I am going to use the 360 degrees analysis techniques to look at oil and gold, the market, sectors, industries, as well as stocks. These are the key systems that I use in my trading. For technical analysis, charting and scanning, I use Q Global and Q Finder. They run on Metastock and I also use Q Elite that runs on TradeStation. For stock fundamental and peer analysis, I use Q Vital. Sector industry rotation analysis in real time, I use Q Edge. And for market and index analysis, I use Q-Index. All these systems are run in 100% real-time using the data from Metastock Zenith. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am starting my analysis with oil ETF USO. I am looking at it using the Q at a glance template that has the weekly and daily chart templates. I am using Q global running on Metastock. In the last market roundup when USO closed here, I mentioned that the likely move of oil from there was upward. That indeed came true. Oil went up this way. On Friday, it ended with a bullish flow color candle, that is cyan color candle. In the weekly, the backdrop color is also bullish. It has a bullish candle shape as well. Looking back, you can see that after displaying the bullish headwind, possible reversal signal, oil has gone up in almost a straight line. In the daily chart, price is now above the upper boundary level. Price is supported by this memory trend line support. It is overbought now for five consecutive days shown by the stretch band indicator. Oil is bullish However, to extend it to the upside for me to look for a buying opportunity right now. If oil was bullish, what about gold? Gold is not so bullish. In the weekly chart, the backdrop color turned to magenta after many weeks. The last time we had a bearish magenta color candle was at this point. After that, gold went up. In the last market roundup, I showed from the weekly chart that though gold was still going up, the rate of going up was reducing. The slope of the weekly chart was reducing. This week, it created a reversal candle at price extreme high even in the weekly chart. The backdrop color is bearish and the shape is also bearish. In the daily, it was moving inside a narrow range. 
it was also bound by memory resistance and memory support. On Friday, price broke down below the memory support trend line. Friday's flow color is bearish, however, the candle shape is indecisive because it has a solid body, bearish, but a long lower tail that is bullish. That is why the candle shape is indecisive. If price can go down from here, then you may look for a bearish trade in gold. And if price can recover above the memory support line, then you may look for a bullish trade in gold. There may not be any Q trade setup using the daily chart. If you were looking for a trade in gold, either to the downside or to the upside, you may try to enter that using the Q fine tune real time chart. After the commodities, I am continuing with the market level ETFs. In the past several weeks, NASDAQ ETF QQQ was the strongest. That is not true anymore. Both for the week as well as on Friday, QQQ is the worst performer. For the week, QQQ went up by 2.7%. S&P 500 ETF SPY went up by 4.9%, DIA by 67 and IWM by 8.1%. Russell 2000 ETF IWM, that is the small cap ETF, was the best performer for the weekly period. And the exact same pattern is true for the daily period also that is Friday's performance. All the market ETFs went up, however, QQQ was the worst performer and IWM was the best performer. This time, as you can see, I am using TradeStation QLE. This is the S&P 500 ETF SPY. The weekly is strongly bullish both in color and shape and the daily is also bullish. This is in sync with what I analyzed in the last market roundup. In the last market roundup, I unambiguously declared that both my market outlook as well as preferred trade direction were bullish. That was very useful because from there SPY went straight up and the other ETFs did the same. Let's have a look at that. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. The relative performance line is tilting down showing it is underperforming the market. However, still it is very bullish. This Friday's candle color and shape both are bullish. The daily is in an uptrend. Price is supported by a memory trend line support. That was true for SPY also. In the weekly, we have a very bullish shape and bullish color candle. This is the only market ETF that made a new all time high this week. It could break above the watermark resistance level. Though this week it is not the best performer, if you look back you can see that QQQ is still very bullish. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA, the relative performance is showing that it is outperforming the market. On Friday it gapped up closed with an indecisive shape candle, however, it closed much above Thursday's close, showing it is strongly bullish. 
it has multiple memory train line support in the daily and also a memory train line support in weekly. Weekly's backdrop color and shape both are bullish. Dia is also looking very strong. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is the best performing ETF this week. The weekly shape and color both are bullish and the daily is also very bullish. After the market level analysis, I am continuing with the sector level analysis. Looking at sector performance over 3 periods, 5 day, 10 day and 1 month. This is a picture from 1 week ago. At that time in the market roundup, I mentioned that my market outlook was bullish. Over 5 day, all the 11 sectors were up. Over 10 day also all the sectors were up and over one month period 8 sectors were up and 3 were down. This is what happened one week ago. And after that in the current week all the sectors went up. All the 11 sectors went up. Now over 5 day 10 day as well as one month period all the 11 sectors are up showing that the sectors are very strong not only the market ETFs are strong that we saw earlier but the sectors are also very strong the stacked bar chart shows that over all the review periods these three review periods energy is the best performer followed by consumer discretionary, real estate, industrials, materials, communication services and so on and so forth. All the sectors are looking very bullish. If we compare this week's performance with previous week's performance then you can see that the red bars are much bigger than the green bars overall showing that market was already bullish one week ago and this week it became even more bullish if you look into further detail looking at the sectors over one day period two day and five day period 5 day period we already saw for the week all the sectors are up and here you see that over 2 day period Thursday Friday and 1 day period Friday there also all the sectors are up now looking at Friday itself all the sectors are up and energy is by far the best performer this sector went up by more than 17% on Friday itself. That is an outlier. The other sectors are also very strong. Went up by significant percentages for one week. The sector level is painting a bullish picture across one month period, 10 day period, 5 day period, 2 day period and even 1 day period. It is very strong indeed. Time to make a call on my market outlook and preferred trade direction. One week ago my market outlook was bullish. Since then the markets became stronger and the sectors became even more bullish. All the four market ETFs are having bullish backdrop candle color, cyan color and all of them are supported by memory trend line support in the daily chart that is very bullish at the market level and the sector level is exceptionally bullish all the sectors are up over one month period 10 day 5 day 2 day and even 1 day period across all these periods 
11 out of 11 sectors went up that is showing strong bullish picture both at the market level as well as the sector level therefore I am keeping my market outlook to be bullish what about my preferred trading direction before taking a call on that Let's have a look at the summary data from QFinder. This is the data from QFinder, the summary charts. In terms of the number of symbols, 87% of them are bullish on Friday. And in terms of Q signals 87% are bullish. This doesn't happen every week. This week, both the symbols as well as signals happen to be bullish by the same percentage, 87%. If you look at the individual signal categories, that is strength signals, trend continuation and trend reversal signals, the green bars are in general much bigger than red bars showing that if you are looking for higher probability trades you may look for them in the bullish direction at present let's come back to my preferred trading direction my market outlook i already decided to be bullish and based on what we saw in QFinder, I am keeping my preferred trading direction to be also bullish. When your preferred trading direction is bullish and market outlook is also bullish, how are you going to find the suitable trading opportunities? One way to do that is to use the top-down approach starting with real-time sector industry analysis tool QH. This is QH. You can see over five day, two day and one day, that is Friday, all the sectors are up. We looked at this data before. In addition, you can see from the summary charts that 100% of the sectors advanced on Friday, 96% of the industries advanced on Friday, and 91% of the stocks, that is the S&P 1500 stocks, advanced on Friday. This is giving a summary outlook. Now let's drill down to the sectors using their sector scorecard and heat map you can instantly see that the strongest sectors at present are real estate and energy. They were weak earlier. The score was in magenta color and in recent periods they both have turned cyan bullish. If you are using top-down approach you would prefer to buy in these two sectors. Which are the weakest sectors at present? They are utilities, consumer staples, and healthcare. All are in defensive areas. Their scores are in magenta color at present. Earlier, their score was more bullish, especially for consumer staples and healthcare you may avoid buying into these three sectors at present. If you are deciding to buy energy or real estate sector stocks, you may drill down into their industries first. These are the energy sector industries. All of them are looking strong. Therefore, you may buy into any of these industries. If you click on the stock drill down button, then you can 
look into all the stocks and you can see many of them went up by huge percentage over five days some went up by as much as 177 percent 173 percent 108 percent so on and so forth other traders may be buying now however using this top-down approach using fully real-time QH you could buy into these stocks well ahead of others and now you may start to book profit or at least protect your profit using trailing stock can you actually buy stocks using live market analysis before others I think you can and I share live examples of that on my traders forum sagarnandi.com under the category sagarnandi stock picks you may also look at the stock picks shared by other q traders many of them are using top-down analysis and some of them are also using bottom-up analysis you may also follow me on twitter twitter.com sagarnandi to look at the live market analysis and stock analysis tweets that I am sharing let me review one example I talked about RCL on 15th April at that time many people were skeptical about the stock and they shared their views on Twitter However, I relied fully on the Q analysis, the 360 degrees analysis. What did I see? This is a snapshot from Q Vital scorecard at that time, stock fundamental scorecard. I had compared RCL with CCL, both were in the same industry, hotel, resorts, and cruise lines. And I showed that though both were undervalued the valuation was in cyan color in terms of latest quarter earnings growth latest quarter revenue growth and also dividend RCL was stronger therefore if I was going to buy any one of them I would prefer to buy RCL An actual buying decision would be based on Q technical charts and I shared the charts also at that time. This was the at a glance chart that I shared. I pointed out that for RCL both the thrust and jump indicators in the weekly chart were at an extreme low level shown by the red dots a recovery from those extreme levels was likely in the weekly chart after this sharp drop when the backdrop candle color was magenta it changed to yellow and price stopped going down at the right edge the weekly displayed bullish pressure and U-turn and it also displayed a bull release signal. In the daily chart price was moving inside a range bound by resistance memory and support memory. In Q technique you would buy if price came to the support memory and went up from there or if you were a breakout trader you would wait for price to break out of this memory resistance and try to buy at the point of the breakout this is what I shared on 15th April and many people were skeptical at that time let's look at RCL now before looking at the chart let's have a look at the industry RCL's industry hotel resorts and cruise lines 
in the recent periods it is strong the score is in cyan color and earlier it was in magenta if you follow my post on twitter you can see that i could think of buying rcl right at the time it was changing from magenta color to cyan color in qh the industry scorecard let's look at its charts now i am using q elite on trade station to look at rcl using the weekly daily at a glance template i have put vertical lines in the weekly and daily charts pointing to the time when i shared the post in twitter that time price was inside a range in the daily chart and as i mentioned you could buy either when price came to the memory support and went up from there maybe at the close of this candle or you could buy when price broke out of the memory resistance maybe at the close of this candle if you bought it at the low point from there to this friday's close you have a large percentage profit how much let's find out let me use the trend line tool interestation and if you look at the third number from the bottom you can see that by buying at memory support reversal you had a 86% profit by this friday's close what if you took the trade as a breakout trade your entry would be at this point and from there to friday's close again you can look up the third number from the bottom using the q breakout setup you would have a 38% profit in the stock by friday's close in this manner not considering what news what media or what other people are saying if you follow the q360 degrees technique where you align forces from industry level fundamental and technical level with your trend you are able to buy stocks well ahead of others in many cases and start to book profit or protect profit with trailing stop when they are starting to notice it this is just one example you may find many such similar trades by using the q systems yourself let me end today's session here you may contact me using my email id trading profitably at gmail.com and you may follow me on my youtube channel trading profitably twitter page sagandandi and also subscribe to the forum sagandandi.com i regularly share live market and stock analysis there thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in my next session have a great week and trade profitably